Good afternoon, Keller Williams, and welcome to day 19 of the Keller Williams Command 66-Day Challenge. So we've been working through opportunities, soon to become the Sales Pipeline submenu, and we are back there again, so we're going to click on Opportunities. Now, we have put several into the system. We know everyone's most exciting time when we have a live listing or when we have an active buyer is submitting an, op an offer. So we are going to show you how to compare offers when you have a listing. We're gonna click on the active phase and we're gonna use our test listing that we have been playing with previously. So this is that seller listing. We're gonna click on that listing and let's say we got in two offers this morning and we wanna start comparing them and be able to provide that comparison to our clients. The first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is click on offers. It's gonna say there are no offers for this deal yet. So we wanna add a new offer. And from there we can test it. So let's say initial offer and this is a seller, uh, a buyer submitting this offer. And so it's initial offer from a buyer. Um, I would always put initial offer because there may be some counter offers, negotiations, et cetera, um, that we kind of keep them separated. So initial offer from, and the client's name was a buyer. So we're gonna create that offer. The first thing that's what I'm gonna do is put in the basic line. So which version is this? This is the initial offer. It's offer date was came in today. They want to close, let's say this time next month. So they wanna close on the 10th. And next it's gonna ask us for parties. So we're gonna click on the parties. Now the seller's information should already be entered automatically from the command contact card. Uh, we'll go into buyer and this is going to be a buyer which is what we said their name was we can put in their email name their email their phone number their address you may not have all this contact information it depends on what your contracts look in each state um, i know sometimes contact information is a requirement and some states don't require it either way the only thing that we is required to put in is their name and then down here who is the agent so let's say Annie agent was the agent that put it in. We could put in Annie's email and then Annie's phone number down here as well. Once we have all of that information entered, we can double check. We can also put in, um, I'm not sure why it didn't pull in the address for the listing, probably because I don't have this tied to KWLS because it's not a real listing. And yet I imagine if it was tied, uh, the address of the listing would come in here as well. And then of course my information there. Next, we're gonna click on terms. And so we'll go back up to the top of the screen. Let's say this first offer was a $300,000 property. Let's say they're putting 10% down, which would be 30,000. Uh, it's a full price offer, so they're gonna finance the remainder. Um, earnest money, they're gonna put down 1%. So if you backspace that out and put down 1.0, it'll calculate that as $3,000. Um, they're gonna put in an option fee. Let's say it's an option fee of $500 and they have a 10-day option period. That's what we call it here in Texas, maybe a little different from state to state. Um, seller, right, seller will contribute blank to a residential service contract. Let's say they're asking for $500 for the warranty, for the service contract, excuse me, and they're not asking for any uh, settlement costs. So we'll put zero there. Next, we can go to agent analysis, and this is where we can actually fill in this information for our client to review once we send over the comparison. So the pros, um, strong offer, right? We can just say 10% um, down is above average, down payment, um, 500 for option fee is above average as well. I usually see 1% or 0.1% is above average. 30-day um, close is good for you to get moved out quick, if that's the situation, if they actually do wanna get moved out quick. Um, cons, no real cons. Um, and if, you know, whatever, you could put whatever information you wanna put in each one of these. And then the summary, um, I think this is this is a strong offer and should definitely be considered. Considered. All right, perfect. So then we can put all the information in. We're going to click on save. And it's going to take us back to the offer screen here shortly. And I've had this happen a couple of times this morning when I've been kind of playing with it and testing the system before recording the video. If you ever get to this free screen, I've seen that just refreshing the screen sometimes will kind of reload it. Um, and sometimes it doesn't. So right now it does show that we have one offer. 
Um, it just doesn't show what that is. But let's go ahead and go back to that sales pipeline um, because the good news is we just got a second offer. So let's click on the seller listing. We're gonna click on offers and we are gonna wait for that page to come up. So again, nothing ever goes wrong when you are doing a live recording. Let's attempt to refresh that one more time and see if we can get that to come up. There it is. All right, so you see, sometimes it just takes a little bit of refreshing and a little bit of patience for that second offer, for the first offer to come up. So um, next we're gonna say, all right, uh, let's add a new offer. Um, this is going to be initial offer from another buyer. Now, obviously you're gonna use their real names. I'm just using fake names right now for this test system. So you would use, you know, Cindy Smith and whatever else. Um, this offer is coming in today, the close date. Let's say they don't wanna close until the end of the month. So we would put April 30th there, the parties, right? We know that this was another buyer, was their name. Again, you would put, you know, Marty Miller or, you know, Rich Smith or whatever it is, another Smith. I don't even know where they came. Another buyer is what we said that was gonna be. All their contact information we could put in. Associate's name, let's just say this is Billy Broker. Um, and we would put in Billy's information as well. Just for the sake of time, I'm gonna skip that. Now let's say this offer was the minimum down three and a half percent, so they're gonna do 10.5. Let's say it's 10.79.5 that they're gonna finance. The offer is only 290. They're still gonna put down 1% earnest money, 1.0. Remember, backspace that out to get there. Option fee, let's say they're gonna put down $300 in option fee. They only want a seven day option. They're not gonna ask for anything. So if you hit zero originally, it doesn't do anything. You kind of have to hit zero twice in each one of these blanks, just so you know, to get that zero to show up. And we can go to agent analysis there. Um, pros, shorter option period, right? Uh, cons, lower than list offer, longer close date, um, and you know, whatever, we could put the summary it's an offer and yet not quite as strong as the other one from Mr. Buyer, Mr. A Buyer, whatever it is. Okay, so you can put all those notes in and we're gonna click on save and then you're gonna see now we have two offers. So we've got the offer from another buyer, which is the buyer's name. And then you also have one from a buyer, the buyer's name, you have the agent's name. You've got what the offer price is, right? What the total offer is, how much are they putting down in cash? How much are they financing? What's the earnest amount? What's their option fee? What's the close date? And then what is the termination notice? We've got a couple of opportunities here for accept or reject, and we can also compare the offers. So once we click on more than one offer, you see this button was light blue. I don't know if you noticed that, but up in the top corner, it's light blue, meaning I can't click on it now. However, once I click on more than one offer, I can click on compare offers, and it's gonna create this nice little handy dandy kind of spreadsheet style that we have. So you can imagine sometimes you take listings, you might get three, four, five, six offers, a great way to kind of put this together for um, easy viewing. And then down here in the bottom right, you can click on email offer comparison. And you have the opportunity to actually send this to your client. So you can create whatever their email address is, the subject title, and then what the message is. And then of course, I would actually attach the documents, the actual offers themselves. So you have that attached, and then you can send a copy of that to your email address as well. Now I will say I did this earlier, um, and it doesn't look like right now, let's see, I sent it to my AOL account and copied myself, and I don't think either of them came through. So I'm gonna follow up labs uh, with labs today and hopefully get an answer by tomorrow to find out um, you know, what's happening with that. So don't freak out if the email doesn't come through. We're still working. I'm sure that's, that problem will be solved very shortly. Um, but that's basically today's challenge is create a couple of test offers, get into this offer system in your opportunity and play with what does it look like to fill out this offer document? What does it look like to compare the two of them? Um, you can actually click here and then see a preview of what the email looks like. I'm not sure that that system's working quite yet. It wasn't working earlier either. Um, and yet, you know, a few small bugs, but the opportunities are amazing, right? I know so many of us have created our own custom spreadsheets that we have to fill in and it takes a lot of time and effort. Um, this system seems to be much quicker and much shorter.
So that's it guys. Today is Command 66 Day Challenge, the offer sub submenu within the sales pipeline submenu. Get in, play, have some fun, and then enjoy the rest of your Sunday. And as always, I look forward to speaking with you in the morning.